Welcome back to Edna Harvey and the Groovemobile. The Groovemobile still has a lot of work to be done on it before Edna and Harvey can drive it across state to the Groove concert in Groove Town. They need another wheel. They need to get into the vehicle itself because the person who sold it to them didn't give them the key. And most importantly, they need to splatter ketchup and mustard everywhere to give it that Edna and Harvey decal finish. Let's see how they're getting on. What we need to do is we need to get into this vehicle, and we also need to check out these paints. Maybe these paints are what we'll use to make it our own. Let's have a look at them. English red metallic. Surely we'll find a use for that. You lousy lackers. <coughs> Don't insult the paint. We may need it. Old and dry. Very much like Dr. Marcel. It's sounding less and less like we'll need it. They're of no use anymore. Oh, couldn't we at least throw the can at something? No? Harvey, you'll find a use for them, I'm sure. Watch it, Harvey. If you get too big a whiff of this, you'll see colors. Blue. To be fair, that is the color of you. I'm not surprised that you see that color first. We could play a British version of paintball with these. Indeed, but not before five o'clock tea. You haven't played paintball, have you? It is far from orderly, and it is quite painful, let me assure you. Pen? Royal light blue. Marvelous! We have made sure that nobody can mix up that paint. Unless, of course, you've written the wrong color on it. That would be very sneaky. He he he! Now Captain Useless has red lips. What was wrong with his lilac lipstick? Wait, you've defaced this edition of Captain Useless? Now its resale value has plummeted! What have you done, Edna? You've ruined it all! Should anybody be opposed to the marriage of Potholder and... No! I love English Red Metallic! And thus, everything got complicated. But hey, it's no different to any soap opera. I'll call this color Red Dawn. Marvelous. And um, what about ketchup? There. English red ketchup. We have augmented that color. Now it is perfect. No, thank you. I don't drink while on duty. Very sensible. What about the signature? The doctor would never sign in paint. Are you sure? What if it's a signature for a very big contract? There are many potential signatures in the paint. The problem is, I can't make them out. Alas. Now let us try using the key. The key could surely use some fresh paint. On the other hand, I like this really worn out vintage look. It certainly makes it look old and in vogue. Is it in vogue being old? It may not be right now, but I'm sure it will be at some point, so my statement is both accurate and inaccurate. It all depends on when you hear it. No, I can't sell it to a vegetarian later if there's red paint on it. Right. I have no idea what that has to do with anything, but there we go. This is the murder weapon. The blood is still fresh. I reckon the culprit must have been a painter. Now, has that changed? No, it has not changed the appearance of the knife. Fair enough. The bartender is more likely to drink it than sign with it. That is unfortunately quite true. Now we have a red telephone like in those 60s movies. Yippee, let's start World War III. Later, little buddy, later. How about never? Don't ever do that. Also, it has not changed color. I have been lied to once again. I'll have a double lacquer for the road. Haven't you sniffed one wall too many today? I know best when I've done enough painting. How many walls have you been sniffing between videos, Edna? Why haven't you told me? We could use the pinking shears to open the red paint cans in a jiffy. Don't you think this plan is a bit cuckoo? What's a mainly black and white bird got to do with an idea this colorful? Also, I like the fact that you use the phrase in a jiffy. I commend you for that. Red paint in a piece of paper? Yippee! We can finger paint New England in fall! That you probably could. 
Let's use the master key. Let us augment it with paint. The master key already thinks it's something special, even without a coat of varnish. You're very quickly discovering that it is far from special. Yes. If we pour all the paint into the pot... We can use the tin can as a pot. I'll sleep on it. And that means she's never going to do it. This pot is quite big. We don't want to replace it with a smaller one. No, I like the color of the coat hanger. Fair enough. What about the cocktail glass? Alcohol doesn't always dissolve paint stains. And it certainly doesn't dissolve a stinky drink. Well, I learned something today, and that is that you should never try and combine a straw with a can of English Metallic Red, because it ends the universe. And by that, I mean using that item on the paint crashes the game. It crashes the game every time I try it, whether I'm recording or not. I don't know if that's something unique to the physical version that I have, or if it's in the digital versions too, but I'm going to avoid that interaction and move on to a toenail. Oh no. I already painted my toenails in flesh color. That you did, and you did it instantly. Rake? Hmm. Red and rake makes... A wreck. That it does. Now jumper cables. If I attach the can to the cable, we'll have a nice centrifuge. Yippee-yay! Fling the rabbit! We could do that without doing that, though. It's called just throwing you, but you probably wouldn't have as much fun. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. A signal colored tool. Do you know what you're doing, Edna? Do you? I somehow I'm starting to doubt it. Finally, paper cup. I think this would be too much for the filthy cup. Yes, get well soon, dear Pappy. I think many things are too much for the paper cup. Now, let us get this open by using the old coat hanger through the window trick. These are the sorts of things you learn watching TV or playing adventure games. Is the door now open? And now, I don't know how to drive. I should get some help. That you should, and we know who can help us with that. The key master, much as we don't want him to. Also, we can close the door again. And then open it. And close it. And open it. If we do this about seven million times, eventually we'll wear down the hinge on the door and the door will fall straight off. And then we can use the door as a shield while we try to escape from a zombie apocalypse. Am I mixing up my games? I might be mixing up my games. Let's move on. And go back to the sedan. There's more that we can do here. Namely, more mayhem that we can cause. Harvey, what do you think of it? What do you make of it, Harvey? The car is taunting us. Yes, I can hear it too. So what are we going to do now? If it doesn't stop soon, we've got to play Crash em Up! Crash em Up! Is Crash em Up pretty much destroy the sedan? Because I'm all for destroying the sedan. But I also want this spare tire. It's the odd one out. That it is. Let's talk to it. How does it feel to be the fifth wheel? I am the sixth wheel. The fifth is always the steering wheel. Well played. That was a clever joke. Let's see if we can take it. Uh-oh. Not like that! Who was that? I'm curious as to if we go right back here, if the driver is still there. The answer is no! We can go right back to trying to take this, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Uh-oh. Not like that, we're not! Who was that? Okay, we're gonna have to try and get this off there, and I think I know how. What if we use the wrench with the spare tire? If I'm very careful, I might just be able to, without setting off the alarm. Marvelous! We now have the spare tire, which means, of course, we're gonna use all our items on it. Our inventory is exceptionally full. If Chairman Chairleg were here, 
We'd have one more thing. I still miss you, Chairman Chairleg. Harvey, what do you think of our latest acquisition? Harvey doesn't need any spare tires. He never gets tired. That he doesn't. In fact, he probably never sleeps, what with being a terrycloth doll. A good opportunity to check the pressure. Very good. Pressure exists. That it does! That is a statement that could apply to anything, though, and the universe in general. Pressure. It exists. Put that in a slogan of a company. Confuse people with it. It's worth it, trust me. I drew a couple more grooves. Aquaplaning, here we come! If you keep drawing more, you will have infinite grooves and you will break the laws of physics. Or not. But it'd be funny to try. The Hawkmobile has six spare tires. Two for every wheel. I imagine there are a lot of times when the tires get punctured. That's the only explanation I can come up with. Ouch! Dr. Marcel's driver was burning rubber. That? He was. Those are some very hot tires. All motorists should carry spare packets of mustard in case of emergency. That they should! Just in case they have a hot dog that doesn't have enough condiments. All motorists should carry spare packets of ketchup in case of emergency. Now they could have had a generic spare packets of condiments in case of an emergency line, but no, they went that extra mile and made an extra line. I commend you, game. Great. Now I have one-fifth of a patrol car. I think you have a lot less of a patrol car, unless your patrol car is literally five wheels. We need the actual body of it. And speaking of body, let's add more body to the cornflakes by dunking a spare tire into them. Spare tire. The most effective way to make crumbs. It's a pretty effective way of turning the entire thing into a flattened piece of cardboard and crumbs. Darn it. The pen won't write on rubber. Oh, ruined. I'll get back to you on this. You never know. Maybe I'll need Mr. Goodyear's signature later. Maybe you will, though the chances are slim. Yeah. Some conversations can be quite cryptic, but I don't think this kind of key will help. Alas. I wonder if the driver's gonna realize that that, uh, tire has been taken. Probably. But good luck finding it. Careful. I don't want to puncture the tire. That we don't, which begs the question, why did you try? The tire profile doesn't seem deep enough. Uh-oh, I hope this doesn't have a negative effect on our escape. I'm sure it won't. Also, there was that Star Trek sound effect again. Sneaking in sneakily. Darn it, the pen won't write on rubber. Not even if we try the barkeeper's signature will that work. Sorry. I'm not a AAA member. Oh, why not? It would make our escape so much easier if you were. We could call them, the gate would open, and then we'd run for it! And then they'd probably get annoyed. The spare tire is not on the menu. I got one nonetheless. Life is a genie, and you have rough palms. I don't get how that would help. I think it's still lacking a couple of zigzag patterns. Uh-oh. I hope this doesn't have a negative effect on our escape. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's a very slow puncture. Sometimes group therapy makes me feel like the fifth wheel. And now you have the fifth wheel! Or as Harvey said, the sixth wheel. Interaction with the master key? Right. This key substitutes other keys. It's not a substitute for a wrench! Oh, We even have a wrench. But I learned something today. Keys do not often make good wrench substitutes. Put that down in your diary, folks. Take it to heart. Oh, how the cruel world taunts us. Too big, the spare tire. Too small, the pot. Too stupid, the idea. Too lonely, this single plant. Alas, plant, you will forever be alone. And we still have the coat hanger! Brilliant, there's clearly more use for it in the future. It took millions of years to invent fire. Another 10,000 for the wheel. And what has been invented in the last century? The coat hanger and the can opener. Why didn't they start off with inventions like that in the first place? They could have saved a lot of time. 
Indeed, they could have. Who needs flimsy fire when we have coat hanger? We probably needed fire first. I'm gonna wait on using the uh, cocktail glass. Hmm. Let's see if I can find anything in the cracks. <laughs> hmm. Nothing but sand, dust, and gravel. I don't know what you were expecting. I can get into the grooves quite well with the toenail. The question is, why do you want to get into the grooves? Only when I'm dancing can I feel this free. I was half expecting the song to continue, but it didn't. Just a second. There are already grooves in there. Someone beat me to it. Those darn crafty tire designers, whatever will they do next? <laughs> what? What's up? Oh, nothing. Come on, tell me. I just had a thought. Just imagine this was a computer game. And imagine further, there's an author who has to come up with all this dialogue. In that case, he's even got to come up with a line when I combine the spare tire with the water cup. Oh dear, poor fellow. I sympathize with you and commend you for the awesome job that you've done. Now let's combine the spare tire with the jumper cable. I should open a workshop. That you should, once we got out of here. Did you see that, Harvey? I just used the wrench. I could detach the spare tire without any struggle. I'm intellectually under-challenged. Do you want to go back to group therapy? Yippee! We're not going back to group therapy. What we're doing is we're going to try and use the comic book with the sedan. In this panel, we see Captain Useless jumping on one foot because he kicked the Honkmobile. Honkmobile one, Captain Useless nil. Let us arrest the sedan. No, why don't you try something else? This isn't destructive enough. Isn't it? What about the phone? No, why don't you try... Okay, the game is steering me towards trying particular things. Clearly, we must bring the mallet to the sedan. Have at thee! Uh-oh. Flee before they notice! Who was that? Who was that? What was that, you mean? We just put a massive dent in the sedan. And it's still there. You weren't able to use any magic sedan fixing powers to get rid of that. Now let us attack it with a rake, because we are angry with Marcel! And we shall vent that anger on the vehicle. Who was that? That vehicle's resale value has plummeted. And you know what? While I'm thinking about it, let's deal with those headlights. The only way we know how. Wrench to them! Uh-oh. Oh wow, we're causing a lot of damage. Who was that? Good luck getting all this fixed, Dr. Marcel. It's gonna cost you a fortune. That's exactly why Edna's doing it. Uh-oh. I wonder if there's anything else we can do. Who was that? Oh, that was just us. You really should stay by the car a little longer than two seconds, though. Then you might notice us doing this. You might notice us attacking this with a knife. Uh-oh. Who was that? That didn't seem to cause any additional damage, though. And really, there aren't that many more things that we could use. We could use the fork? Let's try the fork. See if that does anything different. I'm starting to think that it won't, because it will make a similar sort of thing to the rake due to its design, but let's give it a go! Uh-oh. Flee! Who 
was that? I don't think we're causing any more damage to the sedan. And so, when we come back folks, we've done quite a lot of damage. But we still have this sign to look at. This very informative sign. Will it be like the other sign we encountered? Will it be as helpful? Maybe. That's something we'll find out then. And so, I'll catch you next time folks, and I'll see you then. Later. And we still have the area with the gate to check out, the watchtower that is probably full of people, all ready to apprehend Edna. But little do they know that we're armed with a tire! They will tire before we will! Ha <laughs> ha! Get it? Tire? Never mind. Later.